the day on Ed Chat. It's a new star here at The Educators as we welcome our two new hoes, Reiner Seymour and Prince TJ. Reiner Seymour and Prince TJ, first day as our newest co-hosts. We're all diving into the stories everyone's been talking about, including the Santez blocking AP African American studies. This has an impact on many students who are, you know, taking these um, African American study classes. Y'all need a new governor. I'm sorry I have to say that. Y'all need a new governor. It's important for us to understand and know our history. It was one of the hottest trending topics, and you don't want to miss what we have to say about it. The Educators with Brian Ear Seymour. Prince TJ and me, Danny Anderson. The Educator starts now. Welcome to The Educators. Yes. Oh my gosh. We are so freaking happy that you all are with us today and that. I'm, I am so excited to say this, that we are back. We are back from our long, yes, from our long hiatus. And we have truly yes. missed you all so much. Yes, that's right, TJ. Yes, we have. I mean, we miss doing this show. Seriously, we miss doing this show. Now, it's not only, you guys, the first day of us being back together. But guess what? It's. Reiner Seymour and Prince TJ, first day as our newest co-hosts. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. Welcome, fellas. Welcome to the educators. You guys are our new co-hosts. Oh my gosh. This this is yes. this is I'm Man. so happy for you guys. I'm so happy for you guys. Your first day. I'm gonna hand it over to Brian Near. How are you feeling right now in this present moment of being with us? I'm excited to be a part of this space. Let's talk some education and let's get the world educated. Brian, I mean, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I do, need to, I do not need to mess up. I do not need to mess up on our first day. Yeah. Prince TJ, how are you feeling? Already messing up. Uh, <laughs> I am. I am very happy about joining the show. It, it's it's an incredible show. I am so happy to be a part of it. Let's talk some education, like Bryce said. Let's talk some education. We are so happy to have you guys with us. This is a new star here at The Educators, and we are yes. kicking it off. So let's, you guys, let's get into what we know best, okay, which is some ad chat. You guys ready for yeah. some ad chat? Yeah. Yes, I am. Always right. ready. I know that's right. Well, guess, get this, you guys, because back in January of this year, uh, the state of Florida had rejected the opportunity to have an advanced placement course on African-American studies being taught to its high school students. Yes, stating that the course is not historically accurate and that it violates state law. Now, according to the New York Times, the Florida Department of Education, they sent a letter to the college board notifying them that the African-American studies course would not be in the state course directory. I know, right? And also the New York Times, it did note that the state governor, Ron DeSantis, you, uh, I don't like saying that name, seriously, it just gives me chills, it gives me chills. Uh, he did sign legislation that limits how racism in other moments in history can be taught in schools, in the workplace. Uh, mm -hmm. And that legislation, it later became known as the Stop Woke Act. And under that law, it stops instruction that could make students feel any responsibility or guilt about the past action performed by members of their race. Now, this is really interesting, you guys. This, this, I, I want to hear your guys' take on this. What do you guys think yeah. about this? What are you thinking? What are your thoughts? Because this happened back earlier this year, and I, I'm i open up the floor. I'm open up the floor. Who wants to start this off? Because I think it's ridiculous. Yeah. Even though even though it started like a couple of months ago, it, well, even though he did this like a couple of months ago, it still is impactful. And I think that it does need to be spoken about here on The Educators today simply because it involves education. And this has an impact on many students who are, you know, taking these um, 
African American study classes. Like, it, 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 Ron DeStan Piss is out of his mind. I don't know what he was thinking when he wanted to ban AP African American studies. I don't know. I, I don't know what he was thinking. I think that. Okay, so I got a little something for you guys. Um, all AP class, or well, some AP classes were found uh, to have increased stress levels and lower grades when he um, when he uh, did this. So I, I don't understand. And then also when he found out or when he heard that everybody was like bashing him on this situation because this is huge. Like, come on, like, why does all these other races get to learn about their culture, where they, their background, but us black folks, we don't get to learn about our back. Like it was something mm -hmm. going on there. And actually mm -hmm. uh, he had reversed this because he has been receiving backlash. So <laughs> what do you think people were going to do? Be like, ooh, 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 yeah, yeah, ban those AP classes. No, no. I just don't understand that man, honestly. I I, I just really don't. Uh, Florida, y'all need a new governor. I'm sorry I had to say that. Y'all need a new governor. Y'all just really, it's yeah. just, Brian Neer, what, what, what was your whole thing about this when when, when you first have heard of this? Yes, it's just some bug. <laughs> yeah. It's just some bug. Because like, going, back, going back what TJ said, like, it's important for us to understand and know our history. And then the most BS excuse you give is that you don't want us to be tarnished or yeah. us to feel bad about the previous actions that happened back in our time. Exactly. So you're basically trying to back up of what y'all did to us and not letting us know the history that y'all did to us. No, it really, it really don't make sense to me because it really doesn't like what, what how, how are we supposed to feel responsible of the actions y'all did? Like, literally, right. Right. Yeah. That? yeah, like it wasn't we we didn't we didn't want to get whipped, we we didn't we didn't want to get beat, we didn't want to get you know do all of that right. racism right. stuff. We didn't want all of that. Y'all right. did. How are we exactly. feel about that? That don't make sense to me. And how is that blocking us from knowing the actual history? Because it's yes. the history that leads you on and teaches you how to become a better person. So yeah. I don't get that. that. That's just straight up blue to me. It really is. Like Ab abs Absolutely, absolutely. And, and I'm with you. I'm with you, fellas, because this absolutely. So you're telling me, and teach. I think you brought this up. You're telling me that other races, they can, you know, learn their history. But us right. Black people, we cannot. It, 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 it is. It is some bull. And it is. It is. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm uh, hopefully. Hopefully, you know, by the time I be a teacher, there will be some change happening into our schools. If not, I'm going to be the first. Yeah. But Absolutely. I don't care. I hope Tennessee does not. I hope Tennessee does not. Uh, <laughs> the, the, our our governor does not do what what a uh, Florida governor did because if so, then um, I don't know what they're going to do to me because I, I I'm so a math good. teacher. I'm a math teacher, but I need mm -hmm. to teach my students. You know, our history. Okay, that's what yeah. I'm going to do. And you can follow yeah. me. You can do whatever you want to. I'm going to go to another school district, do the exact same thing. Because, Ugh. hey, I, I'm just be honest. I'm just be honest here. Hey, you can do it. Literally, and, and, it's, and it's wrong. It's straight up wrong. It is. It's a disgrace. Yeah. Because it when is. we grow up, we see all of this, and when we hear all of this, and we're not going to know what happened, know our real history, and just be spoon-fed the history y'all want us to know. It's going, yeah. it's going to be very to our students and our culture. And it, it, it's, it's really sad. Exactly. Like, I'm from Florida. So this is not shocking to me. This ain't shocking to me. It's Florida, so. Uh, I know. Ooh. And moving on, and speaking about more bands, the cell phone band in schools are back, y'all. And uh, more schools are moving to limit or ban the use of cell phones in the classrooms. Now, educators have pretty lengthy things to say about this, particularly mm -hmm. one, Patrick Dan, an English teacher at Allen Park High School in Trenton, Michigan, did not 
enter the teaching profession to police cell phones in his classroom. He began his career in 2007 just as phones and social media began to tighten their grip on consumers and teenagers. Well, he expected new technology to be a part of his classroom, but he didn't anticipate on being in consistent competition with them for his students' attention. He says that he put the pockets on the wall and 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 even when they enter the classroom, they're supposed to put the phones in the pockets on the wall, but he tried multiple um, incentives and too many students were just getting off task and was not paying attention. And this oh. is a battle throughout the day and it is exhausting, quote him. So mm -hmm. gentlemen, what do you think about this? And, and do you think cell phones should be banned in schools? And if you think so, then why? Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, oh my gosh, it's just so many bands happening. Why is this the the AP band, TikTok band, cell phone band? What, is, this, but what is going now. on? What is going on? What is going Everybody in our, everybody <laughs> in, our, in our country is on crack. I just don't know what's yes. going on, okay? Yes. Oh, all right. I think that... I think me. I think that cell phones should be banned uh, because you know it, you hear all these school shootings going around in different kinds of states in our country. Like this is not in different Dubai, the UK. This is in the U.S. on where we live, and you know there's plenty of here where I am in Texas. Many school shootings in Tennessee. You guys, there was like a a a, 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 a school shooting like a couple of months ago. Yeah. So. And, and in South Carolina, so it's just like school shootings everywhere. Um, so just in case of, if, of an emergency, students can have that right to bring out their phones and call their parent or guardian to inform them on what's going on with the school. You know, even though yes, that is the office's job, that is the school's job. Also, you know, from the student, it, it's good to hear from the student uh, itself. Um. And then you can all phones are actually helpful in the classroom, believe it or not. Like they're sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, yes, they're not helpful because you know what whatever case it may be, but I think that cell phones are very helpful. What about y'all? Uh, Everybody's speechless today. <laughs> yeah, because you because you said wait, repeat what you said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because Me? you, yeah. Yes. Because you said, what was your you answer? wanted to ban them? No, 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 no. That came did out your mouth. Uh huh. It sure, oh. it sure did. It sure did. We can replay <laughs> that. Me, I think that cell phones should be banned. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want cell phones to be banned. Okay, let me say that because it's very helpful in class and in the case of emergency. So, yeah, that's what I was. Ooh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh huh. Sure. Yeah. You see, Brynir. You see what he's doing. He's trying to flip it. He's trying to flip it around. No, he no. Like he's slipping. He's slipping. Uh huh. <laughs> but um, I I agree with you, TJ. Cell phones. That that's a whole way of technology now. Because even teachers allow yeah. students to do stuff with their cell phones. So it is impossible for you to ban them. And even if you try to ban them in certain entities or certain places public schools, private schools, you're still going to need your cell phones to still maneuver and operate things. Like, there's ways that you can use your phones. Even teachers record videos for projects and to put them on your phone to present yes. on your project. Yes. So I yep. feel like cell phones shouldn't be banned. And, 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 and this is... And, and, and yes, there could be some limits on when you can use them. Of course, yeah. I get that, because we all can be distracted from cell phones. Yeah. Teachers and governance and everybody, too. So it's exactly. no reason for you to limit a, a student's ability to learn versus the way you see things because you're not in the student's shoes every day. Exactly. I agree, absolutely. My answer, uh, self, because we had this type of a discussion earlier um, in past seasons, and I still uh, strongly of what I said that cell phones should not be banned from schools. It should not because, you know, we never know, you know, like, you know, yeah. something may happen. You know, something may happen and a child would need to, you know, have access to their phone, you know, to contact their parents. I understand, you know, they're supposed to go to the you know, office to do that. But what if, you know, it's it's something really, really, you know, 
an emergency that they have to use it. I understand that. And also, you know, well, you know, technology is so big now, you know, using the phones, Chromebooks, laptops, uh, that is greatly needed. Now, it's only needed, you know, when it is needed. You don't need to use your phone all the time in schools because that can be a distraction. It can. It can be a distraction because you're always on it. You're playing games. You know, our students are not supposed to be on it. So there's a limit, you know, because I, I'm quite like in the I'm quite like in the middle of yes, cell phones should not be banned in schools. But then a part of me, I don't know why it's saying that cell phones should be banned in schools because you know, social media, I believe we're going to get into later into the show, that social media is really like destroying our young people today. It really is. And yeah. it's, I feel in today's world, it's a problem and it's an issue that needs to be fixed. So cell phones, I'm all, I'm all right with them. I'm all right with them. But and I'm going to tell you guys this, any of my future students out there who potentially will watch this um, one day, uh, in Mr. Anderson class, we you guys would use your cell phones when needed, okay? And I will let you know when you will use it. So you're not going to be slick, my future students. You're not going to be slick. <laughs> we know we can't be slick in Mr. Anderson class because, you know, no. I get a lot. But, <laughs> but well, all that being said, that takes us to our first break. But do not move. We have more of the educators coming right up. Love watching the educators? You could be a part of our conversation too. The Educators is active on social media. Like us on Facebook and be a part of our conversation by telling us what you think. Follow us on Instagram for behind the scenes content of our show and follow us on Twitter to stay up to date with what's happening on our show and the world. You keep the conversation going. So get social with your friends now. Like, comment and connect with us on The Educators. The Mr. Businessman himself, Prince TJ, has done it all from writing, producing, and hosting. But now, it's time for a new stage. From executive producers Brandier Seymour and Prince TJ comes. TJ, a new sitcom, premiering this June on Venn TV. Welcome to the joy. Yes. Like a new opportunity. So I'm so very happy. My house, you guys. My house. <laughs> Frontier. I'm sorry. The face Damien made, it was funny. I was laughing at Damien's face. I'm sorry. This might be a controversial topic. I'm just be saying what Beyonce is. Chloe, Hallie, everybody. Savior. Duh. Oh, you just leave that to me over here, the professional. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Two new co-hosts. I cannot wait, you guys. I just have this one question. Okay. Are you guys ready for some ad chat? Let's do it. Let's do it. Always. <laughs> Welcome back to the educators. It's time for more ad chat. All right, you guys, so there's a growing body of research that has many med medical professionals warning about the negative impact of social media on our children. Now, most social media sites like Facebook and Twitter allow kids to open an account at the age of 13 years old. But Surgeon General Vivek Murthy says that he thinks that's too young. So here's the question, gentlemen. Uh, do you agree with Surgeon General uh, 13 being too early for social media? And what is the age that is appropriate for children to have social media? I, I agree with him. I absolutely agree with him. Really? Because that is way too, that's what, 13 is what? Teenage, teenager, that's too freaking early. Because, you know, like I said earlier, into right now in today's world this social media is like literally destroying our students you know you're having cyberbullying happening you're having suicides because our kids you know our students especially on tiktok now there is some good to tiktok there is some good to it but there there is some also some bad to it with our students 
our kids actually who are constantly always on it. I'm not talking about, you know, with the funny videos, you know, motivation stuff. I'm not talking about that type of content. I'm talking about other things on there that really, I, 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 I don't know what it's doing to our kids, but it's literally drawing them in and it's, 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 it's a mess. It's a mess. So 13 is too early. Now, you guys are probably going to be shocked of the answer I say when kids should be allowed on social media. Now, this is for me and for my future kids. The right age for kids to get on social media is when they are in high school during their junior or senior year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is the right age. That's, yeah. Yeah. Now see, I can I can I can I understand what you're saying. Dang. <laughs> I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying, Damien, because yeah. you're right. Social media can sometimes get into kids' minds and they can enlist yeah. them and they're doing the wrong. And yeah, I get that. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. I get that. But yeah. Yeah. I feel like 13, me personally, I feel like 13 on social media is a little risky. I ain't gonna lie, 13 year olds can be a little wild these days. Mm -hmm. But I would say eighth grade, you know, when you're 14, 15. Because, you know, I don't want to keep you off of social media. I want you to learn your way through social media because everybody makes mistakes doing social media. I made mistakes. I know you guys made mistakes as well on knowing what to post, what not to post, what to see, what not to see. And that it's pretty much a learnable moment because I, I go by this quote a lot. Learn or well, fail your way to success is one quote I always love and I go through because, mm -hmm. you know, I ain't gonna lie to you. We sometimes see kids that are like, because no, me, I'm an influencer. I'm a late night host. I get a lot of people attention all the time. I get like 10 year olds and nine year olds trying to watch my show. And I'm like, oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. like, well, you know what I mean? Like, good Lord. You know, Ooh. but I get what you're yeah. saying, bro. and I agree with the so with the Surgeon General that social media, you know, the age could be a little, a little older. And I feel like at the end of the day, just be mature with it. You know, be be a maturable age to really go on social media. I agree. Oh my gosh, you guys! Uh, what? Well, oh gosh, he he's gonna what? Hey, what is it? What? Hey, to be Hey, be the backbreaker. Oh gosh. Always, but I think that that is come on. It's 13. That is not too early. That is like why you say that? Why you well no well, I, I want to hear why. Why you say that? Why? Well, because you're you're a teenager at, at the age of 13. And from 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 us having being around certain 13 year olds, we know that not every 13 year old is mature. Not every, you know, teenager is mature at that age. But at the same time, right. you can have you can have a social media account. Just you can have parental guidance with you. Okay. So there are some accounts that are on social media that say account ran by their parent or you know, something like that. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, having a social media, yes, it, it, it's cyberbullying, and you're gonna see some th things that you know, you know, you got your, you know, you're gonna be like, okay, you know. And then also at the same time, people have their own opinions. People are entitled to their own opinions, and then you're gonna get stuck in that and be like, well, what are you talking about? And then also at the same time, People on TikTok, people on Instagram, they little be kids. They just little kids, and they already cussing and shooting off, and you know, saying negative comments and going to people's comments and saying some bull crap. So I think, mm. I, okay, here's the ages I think you have. you should have a social media uh -oh. between the ages of thirteen and fifteen. Somewhere in that age, you can start a social media account um, because. Um, well, technology. That's 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 just what I think, you guys, because 
I mean, I, I, I would consider myself mature. Do you, do you guys agree? Thank you for agreeing, guys. Thank you for agreeing. Um, but I am 14. And Luna turned 15 in was May, June, July. Three months, you guys. So, and I had a social media account since I was 10. Hmm. Because I told you guys, I've been, you know, in the camera world, I've been in this industry since I was nine, okay? I've just been doing this since I was nine. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ah. Well, oh why are your eyes lit up like that? We can agree. <laughs> to make to like, Go ahead, Brian. No, no. I was about 13, 14 when I started my social media pages. Okay, I was 13 when I started late nights. Oh, yes. look. That's, that's, that's interesting. That's interesting there. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> wait, oh, oh, okay. Well, now you guys are going to judge me now because I think no, I think <laughs> I think that's that's where I started to get on social media around that age. So that okay. is hypocritical, hypocritical. Okay. <laughs> I right. tell you, but <laughs> Danny was mature. Yeah, but hey, look, yeah, but there's look. there's no but into it. I'm mature. Yeah, that's an age, dog. We ain't talking about. Moods and maturity. We talking about age. Well, thirteen that that's critical. Thirteen is too early. Sorry, thirteen is is too early. But moving on. Um, mm -hmm. this is a really good one here. Okay. okay. So I came across an IG post that really caught my attention about kids needing consequences. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. So America's favorite rapping teacher from Chicago and author of the Simon B. Rodham series, Dwayne Reed. I follow him, all of his content. He's a good person, good person. Um, he shared his own feelings saying, and I quote, kids need consequences from people who love them before they end up with consequences from people who don't. And he continues on, kids need to experience natural logic well explained consequences in order to learn and grow. An adult should have high expectations, but must also provide high levels of support to help our young people reach those expectations. And when they don't, and you know, when they struggle, be firm with boundaries, yet filled with grace. And consequences are necessary in pursuit of authentic growth and development. I just gotta give a hand clap to that. I just gotta give a hand clap to that. Uh, so my amazing new co-host, What's your take on this quote? And do you guys believe that our kids today, do they need consequences? And if so, why? Well, 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 well. Here we are again. Um, I actually, okay, I can say that the quote, I, I can say that the quote on what he said that kids need consequences um, from people who love them. Uh, I, I can agree with that. I could. I, I actually could agree with that. Um, because if you're not going to teach your child right from wrong, then the world is, and you don't want the world to teach your child. You want to teach teach that child. Um, I think that. <laughs> do, <laughs> do I believe that kids could? should have consequences absolutely 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 um but do i think they should get hit with a with a belt no okay it's just it's just certain levels to it's certain levels to consequences and certain levels to discipline and um i mean yeah so go ahead y'all like what what, what do y'all think i get what you're saying about that because Consequences are very much needed in order to get the child to know from right from wrong on their own. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's, it's very it's very critical that, that people should know, that children should know right from wrong versus the, from the consequences that their parents teach them. Um, whoopings, that were main consequences when we were growing up, but obviously it's not, obviously that's a blast from the past now. But if maybe the parents can really consequence their children, and can and can teach their children right from wrong. They 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 then then they should be able to, you know, 
push forth and, and operate this world because this is crazy, bro. Yeah, it is. It very much is. It it, 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 it it really totally is. And kids today, I believe, yes, they need consequences. They were, Because these kids these days, there's just, I don't know. I, I, for some reason, like ever since I graduated from high school, just everything just started to, what what is going on? Our children, our schools, that's just, I am just, yeah. I'm drained out. What's the blue it? It's confusing. Yeah, it, it is so <laughs> confusing in our it I I I and I, I am a firm believer on this that it, it it truly starts from home. It starts at home with the parents yeah. of right. how you are raising your child because yeah. you don't want the world, I believe one of you guys mentioned it, you don't want the world, you know, to teach your child. You don't want that because it's so damn well, no, I'ma just leave it at that. So I'ma just leave it some at bubbles. That. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You're right. And it's sad too. That it really is. Discipline, because discipline is is firm. It's it stays. It stays and it's embedded in you. Because when you go do the wrong thing, you always think. And I think me and Damien and, and everybody else here, TJ, would probably know if it's embedded in your house. If it's embedded in, in yourself, that if you do something wrong, you're about to do something wrong. What would my mama say? What would what would mm. what would my grand? What would people say? What would my parents say? And how would they react if I do this stupid thing? But, in mind. but also, you guys got, I don't know, you know, I think we're running out of time on this, but also you guys got to know that, come on, it's a new time in the world. No, yeah, but mm -hmm. it, it still, it's still got to be valued. Yeah, it does. It does. Boundaries, think, boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we have to go to break right now. Um, so now we have to go to we have to take a quick break. There's more of the educators coming right up. Stay right there. You're watching the educators. So you guys remember what happened last year at the Oscars between Will Smith and, you know, yeah. Chris Rock and that whole little fiasco when Will walked up on stage and then slapped Chris. I was like, he my wife came out you. Yeah, all of that. Y'all know this, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's something I want to, it's something I want to mention here. Um, so I do the half at the Oscars. Um, back to like Arthur, Jason Wilson went on the K podcast to talk about how we should respond instead of react to disrespect. Take a look at this clip. Um, it was one time in middle school where I was confronted confronted by this older classmate. He said something to me about like a problem that I had with learning. Like it wasn't like a problem. I just learned slower than other people. He said something about my mom. Say that you oh your mom is dumb, so that means you dumb. So I don't I don't typically fight people unless they say something about my mom. So once he said that about my mom, I stood up and I, I hit him and I got suspended for that day. I want to expose the deception of what a real man is, this world's definition of one. Because if we keep continuing to re try to resolve conflict with conflict, there continue to be situations like we saw at the Oscars. There continue to be more bodies in the city morgue. Anyone could penetrate you, your mind, 
your emotions. And I don't want you to be like a lot of men out here who egos get in the way and pride or the trauma, something that happened in the past. They say, that ain't going to never happen to me again. If someone else ever speak to me like that, I'm, you know, I'm doing this. Don't ever make a vow like that. Because you're programming your brain to basically you're fixed on a response instead of allowing yourself to process the best decision to be made in that situation. All right. So he then goes on to say it's very challenging to maintain a resolute spirit in the heat of the moment. But when you practice it daily in small situations, you become stronger. So my boy, Prince TJ, how do you feel about this? This happened over a year ago. Um, this it was like what a year and three months ago. I don't know if I do my math correct, you know, I'm not really, you know. Anyway, uh, just uh, I think that Will could have went went another way about it, um, because like 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 it is. Chris Rock is a comedian, like he is a comedian for a reason. Like he's funny. That's what he does. He makes jokes. You know. That's the only reason why. Like he hosted, they picked him to host the Oscars last year, and I think that it was amazing. I think he did a great job. Um, he did he did all his amazing jokes when he made that joke, um, talking about Jada, you know, GI Jake joke. Um, like I think it was unprofessional of Will to do that. You know, it's it's a live award show. Billions of people are watching, and yes. you have the courage. To take your big tall self up on that stage and smack little Chris, it was like, oh my gosh! And I want to, I want to say this: I, I, I was not tuning in to the award show that night. I was actually, you know, laying in bed in the darkness, uh, watching YouTube, and then I scrolled on Instagram and I seen the com the comedian Lonnie Love posted on her Instagram. I'm like, this is not real. This is not real. This is not real. This is not real. Then I went and saw it. I go on TikTok. Everybody talk about it. I'm like, oh my gosh, what is going on? So mm -hmm. I think it was just unprofessional Will. So that's I, I, I think I think Will was triggered because something oh, yeah. happened. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I'm gonna go up there and do that. You know what I mean? And that's like you're right. It's old news and stuff like that. And and and, and I feel like it was just triggered because in a way, and and, and to be honest with you, I'm a comedian. These are the men. I get on them all the time. I especially roast Damien oh my all gosh. the time. I roast him all the time. Bring up that joke. <laughs> what you say to him? Yeah, yo, 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 go ahead. Yeah, go ahead and let our Ed fam know. Go ahead, Bonio. <laughs> he is a 50-year-old man stuck in a 22-year-old's body. Literally. <laughs> But listen though, I don't see Damien up here trying to slap me, trying to attack me. No, he takes no. it like a G. Well, He's like, I'm what? Good if it wasn't virtual, he takes it like a G. <laughs> I think he would if it wasn't virtual. Yeah, he <laughs> would. He would. He would like come here, Brandon. Come here. Mm. Keep my uh, name on your mouth. <laughs> Absolutely. Keep my name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do you think, Damien? It's I, uh, you know, it's it was wrong of Will Smith of what he did, seriously, because he could, you know, compose himself in that moment. But you know, he yeah. had already, you know, made his apology. Then also, Chris Rock, um, what was it? A few what months ago, he did his um Netflix special, collective outrage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and okay, oh, there, is. okay, okay, there was because I didn't uh, watch a snippet up to it. There are some things that, you know, that he said, you know, that I totally agree with him on. There's also some things that he said, I believe something about um, Will Smith, his new his new movie called Emancipation. And what Chris Rock said, I can't, you know, fully remember, but I, I, I didn't like of what he said remember. about that. OK, yeah, yeah I, I did. I didn't like that. I think, I think he said that uh, he only watched the movie to see Will get whipped. I, I didn't like that. <laughs> I did not like that. That was hilarious. I was laughing my no. tail off. It was funny, but you got to admit, as comedians, they don't they didn't care about this back in the day. They don't care how people felt in the back of the day. They no. don't. 
Because all it was was a sense of humor. Now, I feel like this whole generation, this whole momentum is now embedding us comedians to stay in a box and contain so ourselves in a box. Sensitive. Yes, it's so sensitive. Like nobody can have a good laugh in you. You know what I mean? Like we just had a good laugh talking about Damien old, and, and, and that was a perfect laugh. So <laughs> gosh, okay, whatever. <laughs> but whatever. I wish comedians could really just understand that this is a, a world that just needs laughter, and it just needs yeah. audiences to just contain that. Absolutely, and I give it up to I give it up to Chris Rock, uh, because he did that stand up stand up special, and people were criticizing the heck out of that stand up special. But I, I give it up to Chris Rock because no comedian, nobody can do it the way that Chris Rock did it. So I give him props for that. Will I give you props? But you, for that apology, you did good. But you know. Not composing yourself. You got banned for 10 years, my brother. 10 years. Oh, 10 that's... Years. Did he deserve that, though? Uh, that's, that's a long time. But, but yeah, we, but, long time. I'm sorry, that's a long time. Yeah, yes. but but as Gary with the T say, let's call the prayer warriors. Let's go pray for him. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> But while we call the prayer warriors, we're going to take a quick break, y'all. We got more of the educators coming up. Let's go. Welcome back to the educators, everyone, and good morning, class. Good morning, Mr. Anderson. I hope you guys brought your A game today, seriously, because it's hey, time. It's it time. It's time to teach you all. Oh, this is a good one. All of the things. Guess what? About yours truly, Damien Anderson, right here. That's right. So, class is in session. Good morning. And welcome to Mr. Anderson class. Oh. This so I have my wonderful students over here, Brian here, Seymour, and Prince TJ. Present. So, yep, they, they are here. both present. TJ, here. thank th thank you for for showing up to class today. Thank you for showing up yeah. to class today because all oh, week, sure. all week, you decide to come on Friday. I don't know why, but okay, okay. Whatever. Yeah, I'm gonna skip today, but I, I decided. Hey, I need my credits for the year, so I'm okay. <laughs> well, you're almost over. I decided to come. Uh, all go. right. Okay. So here's okay. You guys are gonna learn so much about me. So much about me. You probably know. You probably don't. So, oh, Lord. Uh -huh. get, yeah. Get ready. Get ready because. Hmm. Hmm, let's see. Who knows, Mr. Anderson, the best. Okay, oh, let's see. Man, the pop quiz. Oh yeah, pop quiz. You guys know me. You guys should know me by now. I love getting out pop quiz. Yes. All righty. Uh, this is a good. Don't know. What was that, uh, Brian? Here? Nothing. Nothing. Nah, uh huh. Next time, raise your hand. I'm gonna show the principal. So you learning math, not pop quizzes. Oh, uh, well, TJ, Prince TJ, why are you talking? Did I give you Nothing. permission to I talk? No, no, it was Think. a video. I mean, you know, you're not supposed to be watching a video, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right, Mr. Anderson. Yes, I'm sorry. So stay focused, stay focused, because yeah. here is number one. 
Uh oh. Hmm. Here we go. What's Mr. Anderson favorite color? Whoever knows it, raise your hand. Okay, I see uh, Prince TJ. I'm going to let you go. Blue. B L U E. That is right. Okay. I'm keeping. <laughs> I'm keeping. Oh. Why are you why are you laughing? Because Nothing. yeah, because Brian didn't get it. <laughs> no. Oh no, no, I knew. I, I want to give him a chance, though. But oh, oh, okay. <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> you can what? see his face, he didn't know what it was. It's just I did know. You wanna know how? Because that's my favorite color too. Next question. <laughs> oh, you don't run this class. Hush your mouth. <laughs> Number two. Wait, you just Number two, what's Mr. Anderson? Oh, what's Mr. Anderson's favorite food? Do, 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 do. Brian's not raising his hand. Let me F. think about it, TJ. F, participation grade. F is a participation grade. Uh, you know what? I'm on day time. I'm on day time. I, I can't take my fingers up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you guys done? Teachers always say that. What? It's just, are you done? Oh. TJ. Yes, yeah, sir. It's just my hand is up. Just What's tired. the answer? Um, fried chicken. Brian here? <laughs> um, <sighs> McDonald's <laughs> fries? Really? Okay. I'm going to give you. No. Half, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you. TJ, if you make another out outburst, um, I'm gonna have to write you up. That's a that's an ant though. That's wrong. McDonald's. That's not your another food. word. That's just a side. Another word that comes out of your mouth without raising your hand. You're out of here. <laughs> I'm gonna give Brian Near half. No, actually, I'm gonna give him the full uh point right there because yeah. yes. It is that. So I give you that. I give you that. Yes, Prince TJ, what is it? I just, I do bigger. Well, you're a student. I, this is my wait, classroom. I didn't even okay. Look, you said favorite food. That's not a food, that's a side. Side. Who's the teacher? <laughs> but who? Who's the teacher? Man, <laughs> last one because last one, right. yeah, because uh, I'm seeing students line up outside the hall, so we need to wrap this up. Um, Ooh, about time. oh, uh huh. So let's see what happened to okay, then he's he's getting written up, then and. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I'm right. I'm right. Okay. Um. Well, we're gonna end there. We're gonna end there because I'm. I'm gonna dismiss class early because I'm gonna have to handle this. So Brian, yes, yes. yes. Bathroom, please. Well, yes, because class is dismissed now. So, so hey, you can go because I got handled, Mr. Prince Teach, whatever he went. So, All right. uh, yep, yes. Good day, Mr. Anderson. You do it. You do as well. All righty. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? That was really fun. So you guys make sure you tune in next time for another round of welcome to Mr. Anderson class. Now we have to take another quick break. So don't move and don't go anywhere because you're watching the educators and we'll be right back. Love watching the educators. You can be a part of the conversation, too. The educators is active on social media. Like us on Facebook and be a part of the conversation by telling us what you think. Follow us on Instagram for behind the scenes moments of the show. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date with what's happening on our show and the world. You can keep the conversation going. So get social with your friends now. Like, comment, and connect with us on The Educators.
Welcome back to the educators. And now it is time to, you know, you just had Mr. Anderson's class, I know, but I'm the history teacher here. So let's get started with a little bit of Bride's class, Bride's history class. Slide on into Bride's history class. Let's go. All right, y'all. So, you know, it, on this day in history, on May the 3rd, 2023, the TV show Dallas, which was the second longest running series on CBS, second to Gunsmoke, aired is this 356th episode. And that was mm. their final episode of that show, the show Dallas, back in 1991. Wow, that's wild. Uh, and yeah. also, going along in history, we're also talking about how Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire as Peter Parker premiered yeah. on this day on two, in 2002. Oh, right? gosh. Yeah. Going deep in history, do you hear? Ooh. And we also go around talking about... um a lot of greatness in history and you know a lot of movies came out on this day as well and then one particular thing in history was in 2018 the academy of motion pictures arts and sciences voted to expel bill cosby and roman Pulaski from their you know from their academy wow mm -hmm. i never i never knew they i never knew they could expel people I, I, right. Me either. Me either. That's crazy. That, that's really crazy. I didn't even know they can expel people. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. And then on this day in history, a year ago, um, WNBA player Brittany Griner was wrongfully detained in Russia and was taken into custody when drugs were in her luggage in February 2022. And U.S. government, the government says that she was wrongfully detained on this day in history. So, what do you think about all of that, man? What do you think about all that history that happened on this day? That's all of that of what you just gave. I, I really, especially this, because I was a huge sorry to the Spire Man's um fans out there. I was a huge, I was a huge fan back in the day, a long <laughs> time ago. But I didn't know that was Spire Man, and then everything that you just cover, I that's learning. You learn something new here um, every day on the educators. So thank you yeah. for that, Brian Neer. Of course. Hey, that was Brian's history class. Yo, we got to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with more of the educators. Do not move. Love watching the educators? You can be a part of the conversation too. The educators is active on social media. Like us on Facebook and be a part of the conversation by telling us what you think. Follow us on Instagram for behind the scenes content of our show. And follow us on Twitter to stay up to date with what's happening on our show and the world. You keep the conversation going, so get social with your friends now. Like, comment, and connect with us on The Educators. Closed capturing and utter consideration for The Educators provided by... I mean, from uh, uh, Ed Chat to Mr. Anderson's class to Bryce history class. There's so many classes today. 
And so I do want to say that here on my first day at the educators, it was it was very amazing. It was interesting. Uh, and there was so many things that was happening today. It was just insane. So Bri, what do what do you think? That was a good day. We put y'all can y'all can play the ice cream song. Today was a good day because it kind of was, it really was. Um, first day on a new job, you know, I got fifty eleven jobs, so uh, it, it, it's a lot of work. But I keep I keep going. I love that I keep going. And um, compared to my radio show, this is pretty cool. I'm just loving it. I really am. I'm loving this new energy, this new vibe to the show. Um, mm -hmm. so. This was a great first day of uh, being back together. Um, Brian Near and T Prince TJ as our new co-host. This is, I, I know deep down that this is going to last for a very long time. And I am so looking forward to making many more memories with you guys on this show. So we're back, you guys. We're back. We're back. We're back. And we thank you all so much for being with us today. Oh, gosh. But stay tuned, you guys, because we will be back. Guess what? Tomorrow. Yes, we're back tomorrow uh, for a new episode of The, the Educators. Educators.